Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm comparing a professional watercolor with an average watercolor. The professional watercolor I chose was Windsor & Newton, set of 24, and it is $103 right now. And the average one that I chose is Kroteke Gansai Tambi, a set of 36, and it is only $39 on Amazon right now. I put all the links below so you can check it out, I'm not lying. I tested both and we will see the difference, including this video. All my real-time narrated tutorials are available on my Patreon, patreon.com slash If you're ready, let's paint this beautiful bird. I think it's a toucan from Venezuela. If you know which bird it is, also please share in comments. Here are the materials I will be using in this video. Windsor & Newton's masking fluid and a masking tape. Also my brushes are here. My brush numbers are 11, number 3 and number 9. I also have a separate small brush, the blue one, which is number 3 again, that I use for masking fluid. Please make sure that you use a bad brush for the masking fluid because it ruins it. And my water brush pen is from Chromatech. It is really really useful for details. I started with the background applying wet on wet method. If you don't know what this method is, I'm putting a link in the upper right corner so you can watch my watercolor basics video. I am right now adding all the green and blue colors in the background. They bleed in each other beautifully. I think both sets have very vibrant colors in the sense I can't even tell the difference when I'm doing the background. Now I'm adding the masking fluid in the areas that I want them to stay white. I'm applying it with my small brush. While that's drying, I am moving on to the branch. I use the warm ochre color for both. The second one will, right now, you will see that it yielded a more opaque, more solid result, whereas the first one, I was able to get different tones. For watercolor artists, it is good that your paint is not very opaque because that allows you to do more layers and add more depth. Here I'm adding my light blue color around the eyes. I'm following my reference photo and I'm doing the same thing with the second set. For the beak, I did the first layer with a bluish gray color before I go in with my black. Before I moved on to the chest area, I made sure the background was dry. You can let it dry there or you can use a blow dryer just like I did. I mixed warm yellow with warm red and I got this beautiful orange color for the chest. I think both sets have really gorgeous vibrant colors. I really like this yellow, orange and red colors especially in both sets. I'm adding the green shades in the branch with my number 3 brush and doing the same thing with the second one. And again, you will notice that the green color is also opaque, which doesn't let the underneath ochre color to show itself. Well, this is not bad, but at the same time, when it shows the underneath color, it kind of blends more naturally. I will continue with the background. I'm going to add more green and then more blue on top of it. In terms of bleeding and blending, I think both sets did a great job. They are equally easy to blend and also they dry around the same time. So there's no difference there either. I think I really found this watercolor pen useful. This was my first time using it. I really found it helpful to get all those details in your watercolor painting. I'm drying it up. And here in the beak area, because 
The first one is not that opaque. It allowed me to do more layering on top of each other, which created a better depth, if you ask me. Same goes with the rest of the feather in the wing area and the, you know, the tail area. Here you see on the second one, because it's really, really opaque color, it looks very unnatural. So I'm gonna try to deal with that and try to make it more realistic by adding more layers. There is a bluish gray or Payne's gray layer underneath in the wing area. So I'm going to do that now with wet on wet method and I will add the layers of the wing and the tail with this color. The tail has some beautiful violet so I mixed red and blue to create that color. If you realize this violet color bled on the left into the gray a lot more than the right one. By the way, for the minor differences, I take the full responsibility. With watercolor, sometimes the paint tells you where to go and what to do. And sometimes as an artist, I can make mistakes and I can do one side different than the other one. So I apologize in advance. This is a beautiful red on both sets that I'm about to use. So I am using the bright red on both sets to do the chest area. And I think you will see that right now I'm applying around the tail area as well. They are both equally beautiful. Speaking of mistakes, you will see now that I added too much water on the first one in the background. And honestly, I think I made the green color too dark by mistake. So as you can see, mistakes happen and I will fix it. But when you are comparing two paintings, please take this into consideration. Watercolor pen was really useful in getting those small details on the claw and on the eyes. Trying to make the beaks similar and finish the wing. Make sure your background and branches dry before you add the claw or tail details. After I add all these details with my watercolor pen and fixing the wing, final layer of the wing is added. Now I'm going to try a little bit to fix the background that I didn't like. And then I will remove the masking fluid so we will see how it looks. And we will add a little bit more detail around the beak area and then we will be all good to go. In order to remove the masking fluid, you will see that I'm going to use a old toothbrush. I think it is useful, at least in the beginning, if you kind of remove the first part of the fluid from the paper with the help of your toothbrush, the rest of it comes with your fingers in a way. It looks beautiful. I add all these tiny details around the beak and eye with the help of my watercolor pencil and when I add the eye details on the second one unfortunately it looked like an angry bird so <laughs> I will fix it later with my white gouache I think white gouache is a perfect fixer 
Now it's time to do the leaves. I mixed cool green with cool blue and by adding one more over another, I tried to give different shades, different tones. Here you see that again, the first one, when it dries, it shows the underneath colors. But on the second one, you will see the colors of the leaves are pretty solid. You can't see much the color underneath. We are about to reach the finish line. Do you want to see the comparison and decide which one yielded a better result? Which one looks better? Here we go. So the first one is Windsor and Newton and the second one is Kuretake. Which one did you like most? Please share in the comments. If you ask me, except the fact that layering was much easier and natural in the first one, I didn't see much difference. They have both very vibrant colors and they were very fun to work with. How about you? See you in my next video. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe and visit my website, ajagurlar.com. Stay with art and love.